Hi, I'm pro saxophonist to Jamie Anderson and you're watching Get Your Sax Together, the home of online saxophone lessons. This week we're going to be talking about how to perform jazz ballads on saxophone. I've got a whole bunch of really cool tips for you. Uh, which is really going to help you performing jazz ballads on saxophone. But just before we get there, um, I'll do a performance later on of Misty, and I'm using the Better Tracks backing tracks by your friend and mine, Mr. Jay Metcalf. Big up, Jay. Love the merch as well. Um, and actually, if you go to the Better Tracks uh, website and put in the code JA20, you'll get 20% off your backing tracks. So pretty cool. I'll put the link in the description for you to click on that. Also, I'm running a series which has just opened yesterday. It's a series of three masterclasses and it's called Make Your Sax Sing. And it's really appropriate for today's lesson because it's all about the non-note elements which are really going to take your sax expression to the next level. So articulation, tonguing, vibrato, bend, scoops, grace notes, you name it, growling. It's really going to be an awesome trip. So use the link that you can, the URL that you can see there or click the link in the description. It's absolutely free, no credit card needed, no nothing. There's three absolutely awesome masterclasses, so go and check out Make Your Sax Sing. And finally, when you do look at the uh, the performance at the end or in the intro, I should reassure you that that is not real cigarette smoke, people. <laughs> Get your sax together does not condone smoking, even in the context of a um, stereotypical jazz club. <laughs> So we're going to look at three different areas today in terms of jazz ballads and these are also, uh, in my opinion, in order of importance as well. And it's sound, rhythm and ornamentation. And if you keep watching to the end, I've got a bonus. I've got a bonus section as well, so keep watching because I've got something really cool which is in addition to that. Now, what you're going to learn today, don't treat it as an exhaustive A to Z of everything you need to know about playing jazz ballads. It's going to take years of experience and practice. but it's gonna be a good starting point. The most important thing you can possibly do is to listen to millions of ballads by your favorite jazz players and try and emulate and copy that style because all this you know, knowledge, head stuff is nothing compared to what you're gonna learn by using your ear, having a sound in your head and going after that sound from your favorite record. So first thing to do is to listen transcribe and copy your favorite jazz ballad players. Okay, without further ado, let's move on to the first category, and that is sound. So when you're playing a jazz ballad, obviously sound is the number one thing. It's the, it's the, the alive heart and soul of the song is your tone. I've obviously got an entire program called Total Tone Mastery. I'll stick the link in the description, uh, which talks you through, it doesn't talk you through, it's an entire course about how to get an awesome sound and sax. So that's going to be the real core of what you learn here. But what we're going to focus on for jazz ballads is this thing called subtone. I've also done a whole video on subtone, so many things to check out today. Um, I'll put a link in the description for my subtone video, and it's that soft, velvety, muted tone that you can get on sax that sounds a bit like this. Now, very often subtone is associated with a low register because you can really clearly hear it in the uh, low register. But it's also a way of playing across the whole range of the horn. You can play subtone everywhere to get that silky sound, even up high. And that's opposed to your normal tone, which sounds like this. And to do subtone, it's all in the video I've made, but you're going to take in less mouthpiece, you're going to blow softer, you're going to move your bottom jaw back, and you're just catching those those low frequencies of the sound to make that v, that v, 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 v <laughs> type tone. Now, as you work your way through these ballads, try and vary your sound and make it interesting. So use tonal variations, maybe some alternate fingerings. 
Um, so you can think about using maybe a little bit of ground out again. You've got your vibrato, which you can hold back and then bring in, or you can have the vibrato going through the whole note. There's endless ways of using your vibrato, but consciously use it. Um, so for example, if you're doing a middle D, you could think about using the side D without the octave key instead. <laughs> So you're thinking about really, you know, thinking of your, your sound as like an alive beast, almost like a plasticine beast that you can shape and mould for this song. That's really going to make a big difference. The other thing you can you can do, of course, with your sound is to, to make use of dynamics. So most of the ballad you're going to be playing, you know, at a low volume, because that's what ballads are. They're like mellow and romantic. So it's going to be quite a low volume thing, but you can start notes quietly and shape them or you can bring out certain notes, especially as you as you go up higher for dramatic effect. So really consciously think about using your sound as this alive entity that you can mold and really communicate the sort of beauty and emotion of this song with. Okay, the next thing to talk about, the second category is rhythm. Now, when you're thinking about ballads, you'd think, oh, it's just a nice slow tempo, no problem, no worries. But actually, the slower the tempo, sometimes the more difficult it is. So don't be fooled into thinking just because the tempo is slow, like 60 BPM or something, that you don't have to focus on your rhythm. In fact, as the ballad progresses, you should be thinking in double time through the whole thing. So if it's one and two and three and four, you're thinking... <laughs> Um, now, your eighth notes are typically going to be straight in the average jazz ballad. So you're not going tan, 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 tan. It's not a really slow, you know, shuffle. It's a, it's a ballad, which is straight eights. However, your sixteenths are going to swing. Your semiquavers are going to swing. So there's always, uh, in these jazz ballads, there's always like the main time, which is the swishy kind of, you know, whole um, quarter notes, crotches. <laughs> But always lurking beneath that is just beneath the surface. So when you're playing your ballads, you want to focus on straight eighths, but swing sixteenths. And always think about that implied double time. In fact, quite often in ballads, you'll get to the solo and the band will just start swinging. In fact, the bass player might even start walking. And that's very common in jazz ballads. So always have that locked into your kind of rhythmic DNA. Uh, I'll see if I can demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So in actual fact, there's that quadruple time as well. So you've got your different um, strata of the time field. You've got your basic swish, whoosh, dung, da whoosh, dung, da whoosh. And then beneath that, you've got your straight eights, dung, 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 wah, dung, 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 gong, 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 da dun, dun, da dun, da 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 You've got your swing sixteenths, but you've also got double that. So you've got swing thirty seconds as well. So one and two and three and four straight eights bum 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 sixteenths bum 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 now, of course, rhythmically, you can use a lot of uh, flexi time, a lot of flexibility with how you play the melody. You don't want to just play it straight on the grid all the time, even in one of those four strata. So you can push and pull the time around to really make that melody breathe and come alive as the way you want it. But just don't get lost. You've got to have that 
<clears throat> like locked in all the time, even if you're really pulling it around. So don't lose track of it. So whatever you do, whatever flurries, however you push and pull it, keep the main tempo locked into your body and you can't go, well, I was about to say you can't go too wrong, you really can with jazz ballads, but try and really focus on the rhythm and uh, think of it in double time and quadruple time to really, to really lock in the tempo at all times, even when you are playing flexi time. Okay, the third category, <laughs> the third category is ornamentation. And this is how you enhance and add things to the melody, all right? Or, you know, how you... Because most people aren't just going to play the melody, but this is really important. Never obscure the melody too much. You know, you're, you want that melody, you want to present that melody as beautifully as you can. So you can use turns, you can use bends, you can throw in little licks, you can, um, especially you can vary what octave you're going to play that melody in, but never lose track of uh, communicating the beauty of the melody itself. So, for example, let's look at these things uh, one, at, one at a time. So, turns, let's do an example of turns. That's just playing the note above and then the note or the note below. Turns are really great to use. Bends, of course, now let's talk about bends. Anybody that knows me knows knows um, how I get on, on people's case about lip bends, but that's a whole other story. You can uh, basically use your throat to pitch, you know, and drop your jaw to, to pitch the to pitch the note down and up. And it's gonna give you these nice these nice like scoops up to the notes. But it's very important to do it with the right technique instead of just trying to use lip pressure on the reed that's gonna um that's gonna get you in hot water so the most famous person for this of course was johnny hodges uh duke ellington's alto player who used to do these massive bends these beautiful long bends up to notes so um that's just oh man the way johnny hodges does it you know how good it is so it might be something like this this is an extreme bend of course So that leads me quite nicely onto the next thing, which is little licks, little phrases. Now this, uh, the, when I say licks, I mean little bebop things that you can weave around the melody without kind of crushing the melody too much. And a, and a great place to do this is on the turnaround of the song. So the turnaround is the last two bars. So if you're doing Misty, then you've got two bars on that melody note where nothing happens. So you can hold the note, you can do some little licks around it and uh, fill out the gaps. That's a really nice way of using uh, bebop and uh, other language during your ballad, jazz ballad performances. So I'll play the very last bit of the tune. greatest example but you get the idea uh, and then you can weave the melody back in at the start of the you know the next section so that's a really cool way of of using licks and 
like I mentioned before, uh, sell the melody, but sell it, you know, with augmentation that you like to do that's going to really reflect your character. Uh, going back to the octaves thing, one great way um, of playing a ballad is to start off in the lower register, and then if it's an A A B A A B A tune, for example, you you play it in the lower register for A A, you play the bridge, and then the next time for the last A, you could take that whole melody of the octave. So for the first, let's, let's stick with Misty. For the first couple of A sections, you play it down here, really, really low and uh, really sort of silky and moody. <laughs> You can really harness your subtone. And then after the bridge, you can take it up. That really helps give the jazz, the jazz ballad performance some direction. And um, because there's three repeated sections, it's nice to do something different. So that's what I've got to say about ornamentation. Remember, always let the melody lead the way. Okay, let's move on now, and I've got a special little bonus section. So first of all, in the bonus section, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is the lyrics. Now this is assuming that you're playing um, well-known jazz standards, which of course are mostly songs with lyrics. So, you know, this gnarly old, this gnarly old chestnut, should you know the, the lyrics of the song? Many people will insist that it's very important to know the lyrics of the song if you're going to play that ballad really nicely. And uh, many people did that. Most notably, I think Lester Young, maybe Dexter Gordon, I can't remember. But um, personally, I don't know the words for every standard that I play. I know some of the words for Misty. Uh, Look at me, I'm as helpless as a kid in a tree. And then I can't remember the words. But at some point it goes, or is it the sound of your hello? Is it do 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 do? I get misty the moment you're near. On my left, and a thousand violins begin to play. Uh, that's all I can sort of remember. I know a few lines of it. But you can judge for yourself because I'm going to perform Misty just in a second, and you can tell me if you think it's any good or not. And I can't remember all the words. So I have this rather controversial theory about learning lyrics when you're playing jazz ballads which is, I think is a little bit of Emperor's New Clothes. I don't believe, not that I'm going to call anyone out, but I don't believe that everyone knows the words for every jazz ballad that they play. I think it's a useful thing to do because it can give you the shape and the phrasing and the right notes and the number of syllables, and it can really help you express the melody and even give you, you know, a sense of the mood and the meaning of the song as well. So I'm not saying it's unimportant. I think it's a great thing to do but I still don't think everyone does it. <laughs> I'm just calling it as it is. And uh, let's put it this way. Um, I, I've never felt it's hindered me playing a nice jazz ballad. You can judge for yourself. So there's me, Mr. Controversial, about learning the lyrics. Uh, some other general points before I perform Misty for you. And that is, when you go about doing a ballad, consider the mood of the jazz ballad. There's lots of different ways of playing a jazz ballad. For example, someone like Sunny Stitt would play it more like a bebop number with kind of half time instead of just walking bass. So he'll bebop all over the place and kind of birds a bit like that as well. Or other people like, let's say Wayne Shorter, um, they'll just keep the same hypn hypnotic mood through the whole thing. This kind of, you know, it's almost like still and meditative. And that's what I like anyway. Um, so you kind of keep this even mood. It never goes into double time swing. You know, there's no there's no sort of drama in that sense. Or maybe there is drama. If you do a song like, uh, I don't know, um, Round About Midnight, the, the famous Miles version has got that um, So you can perform your ballad in a dramatic way. You can have a really quiet section and then, you know, you could really bring a dramatic section out and you'd have to talk about that with the band. So consider the overall mood of how you're going to perform that ballad. And there's more than one way to go about it. Just bear that in mind. And finally, before I perform this for you full with full black and white <laughs> mood and jazz club smoke, <laughs> here's the most important thing of all. Here's... 
if you do nothing else, this is the most important thing about playing a jazz ballad on sax. You've got to express, you know, what's in your heart and soul. You've got to tear yourself open for your audience and just be raw and emotional and invested in that ballad and really just, you know, if you need to close your eyes and just try and shut out every other distraction and focus and let that music, you know, let yourself be a conduit, a channel for that music just to pour through you and, you know, communicate that strong emotion, that poignancy that you get from playing a beautiful jazz ballad. Let yourself go with it. That's what this instrument is all about. Don't be afraid to lay yourself on the line. So express what's in your heart and soul. Now talking about expressing what's in your heart and soul, don't forget to go and check out the uh, the Make Your Sax Sing masterclasses that I've got going on right now because that is really going to help you tap into your heart and soul in a way that communicates beautifully to your audience. Alrighty, here we go. Here's my rendition of Misty using the Better Tracks backing track. Remember, you can use the code JA20 to get 20% off. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I don't think I've got anything else to say about it. I'll see you at the end. Here we go.
So that's all I've got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed that, that ballad rendition of Misty. One more time, all the stuff is in the description to get your better tracks. Um, all, all the backing tracks are wicked, actually. Jay does a great job. So um, big up, big up Jay Metcalf. Shout out to Jane and uh, the Better at Sax team. And I've got the masterclasses, which are right now make your sax sing. That's going to help you with all these expressive elements. That's only for a limited time, mind you. So remember that, limited time only. But all the time you can go and check out my Saxophone Success Masterclass using the URL there. And finally, for all of you that have bought me a coffee, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're so generous. And it helps our lowly little saxophonist, saxophonist and YouTuber um, stay caffeinated and stay happy. So thanks very much. Until next week. Well, we're going, oh, I forgot to say, we're going Christmassy next week. So if Christmas is not your thing, apologies. A few Christmas videos as usual and then we're back to normal. So but if Christmas is your thing, you're going to love it. You're going to learn some really, a couple of really cool Christmas songs. That's coming up next week. In the meantime, practice hard, practice smart. Enjoy your music. Take it easy.